Hi everyone, my name is Jeff and welcome to another episode of DOA, Doorward Outdoor Adventures. As you can tell from the information strip on the bottom of your screen, today's episode is going to be all about trail cameras. I will share with you what I do to set up my trail camera network in the areas that I hunt. I'm going to teach you how to set them up, where to set them up, and some of those functions that your trail cameras will provide you. Capturing those candid moments outside in the outdoors when I'm not around is something that's very important to me. Whether I'm using them for hunting information or just to capture everything that's happening outside is one of the reasons I love being outdoors. Come with me. I'll take you with me on today's episode of DOA, Doorward Outdoor Adventures. I like to set my trail cameras up on main game trails between bedding areas and food sources. As we know, animals tend to travel within the last hour of daylight before sunset and also return to their bedding areas first thing in the morning, shortly after sunrise. Whether it's a big bull, or a buck in velvet, or even a doe and fawn, trail cameras give you great information as to what time the animals are traveling and what paths they are taking. Once you've selected an area where you want to set up your camera, you want to make sure you've found a pretty solid tree that's not going to sway in the wind. Also what you're going to want to do is make sure that there's no leaves and branches around that are going to trigger the motion activated sensor on your camera, otherwise you're going to be getting hundreds and thousands of pictures and videos of moving leaves. Here's how I secure my cameras to the trees. Ensure that the excess length of tether is wrapped tightly around the tree and tucked underneath so that it does not have an opportunity to flap in front of your camera and activate the motion sensor. A good idea to also remove any trees and branches in the area. When setting up your trail camera, having it in this position pointing directly across the trail is not the best situation. In this instance, the trigger speed on your camera might not be quick enough and only captures part of whatever is passing in front of it as the field of view is very short from left to right. Ideally, you'd have your trail camera pointed more towards down the trail. That way it gives you a better opportunity of the animals coming to or from you and you catch them in the field of view for a longer period of time. Putting it in this direction will increase your chances of capturing full videos or full pictures of whatever you're trying to capture. I always like to set my trail cameras up at my chest height, which is going to be about four, four and a half feet. Um, depending on the terrain where you're shooting, if your terrain is on a hill, incline, decline, you want to make sure that it's in a position where it's going to capture as much as a different variety of species of animals as possible. Although most of my cameras are at the four and a half feet in height, I also have some that I put at six feet tall. This gives me an opportunity to monitor areas such as intersections, where it gives me a wider range of view and allows me to capture a little bit more. Very important to have a stick angled in the proper direction so that the camera is slightly pointing down and not capturing 20 feet in the air. One of the things I like doing with my trail cameras to get them angled in the perfect position is to leave just a little bit of slack when I'm tightening up that tether. That allows me to shove in a piece of a stick, a branch, to point it either up or down depending on the terrain that I am shooting. It's important to not have your camera pointing directly in an east or west location as it will be facing directly into a sunset or a sunrise when animals tend to move the most. Pointing in an east or west direction will give you sun glare and cause some distortion to your pictures or videos. It can, however, give you some pretty amazing shots if pointed in the right direction, similar to one like this. The time-lapse feature is best used over an open field or a food source. 
This function allows the camera to take pictures through a predetermined set amount of time without anything having to trigger the motion detector. Having it set up in an open field can give you the proper information as to where the animals are traveling and can help you pinpoint a more specific location where to set up your trail cameras. Lots of different settings that you can choose from on your trail cameras, no matter which brand you use. There's going to be video, there's going to be picture, there's going to be time lapse. Each different setting has a different function. I always like to base mine also in accordance with what size of memory card that I have. Um, as you know, videos are going to take up a lot more space on a card than pictures will. You can reduce or increase your image quality, your video quality as well. So if you're running with a small card, 16 gigabyte or, or anything like that, you might want to stick to pictures because it's going to chew up a lot of space on your cars if you're running video. For most of my locations, I run video. Um, I like to see the animals moving. There's so much happening in the background. It gives me so much more intel as to what's happening, whether it's uh, one buck following another buck or one buck following a doe's. And if it's pictures and if my delay settings are timed out for a really long time, I might miss something else that is happening at that same time. The camera that I have set up in this location here, I always run on video. I have captured foxes, coyotes, does and fawns, bucks and velvet, moose in this area. So it gives me a lot of species down in this one area and capturing them all on video is what appeals to me. So we'll talk a little bit about the camera settings here and what they do. This is a older model Browning Command Ops Pro that I use, really durable and whatnot. So as you go into your settings, if you hit the mode button, it'll take it off of the recording mode and put you into the settings. You can set the time and date and time. Uh, you can also select your different modes, um, your capture delay. That means how long it's going to time out before it resets, before taking the next video. You can decrease that to one second and move it up to as much as five minutes. Uh, your video length, how long of a video you want to record. That ranges anywhere between five seconds and two minutes in length. Again, the more time that you record, the more space it's going to use up on your card. Temperature unit, Celsius or Fahrenheit, information strip. The information strip at the bottom of the pictures and the videos give you time, temperature, date, moon phase. You can even put a custom name on the bottom of that banner as well. Uh, SD management, when your card gets full, it will automatically start deleting the oldest pictures on there if you don't get back out in time to change your card. You can also test your motion. You can set this up, walk by the camera at different ranges and a red LED light will blink, letting you know that you are indeed activating the motion detector. Camera name, DOA, of course. And you can return this camera back to its default settings if you choose. Delete all will definitely clear all the pictures on your card. All cameras are going to be a little bit different, but basically all the same. There will be a mode button on this camera here, it's the letter M, for you to press. And once you scroll up and down through whatever function you want to change, you would press the enter or OK button, which is going to allow you to change that. If we were going to change the date, we would press OK cycle through whatever portion we want to change, press OK to save it. Scroll down, same thing for your time, press OK. Switch your time, press OK to lock that in. Always important to change that when you're in daylight savings mode. Um, different modes, press OK. You can scroll between video, trail camera, which are the pictures, and time lapse. Um, different settings for different things. On video mode, we'll leave it on video mode and it'll say our capture delay. Our capture delay is talking about how long after the camera takes a picture or video will it sit idle before it triggers itself to be ready for the next picture. You can change this setting from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, all the way up to a couple minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and that means once it takes a picture, it's going to time out for that amount of time before it's ready to take the next. The less amount of time for your capture delay, the more activity you're going to capture on your trail cameras. Video length. 
of course, anywhere from 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five seconds. The longer your video, the more space it's going to use on your SD card. Myself, I tend to use 20 second videos. Temperature units, pretty straightforward. Information strip, pretty straightforward. Once you're ready to return back to shooting mode, you press the mode button. It's going to tell you what mode it's on. The delay I have at 20 seconds. It's going to be ready to fire as soon as this gets down to zero seconds. And you will see it start recording as soon as it's in ready mode. I hope today's episode gave you a great insight on how to set up your trail cameras, where to locate them, how to point them, and get the most out of them that they have to offer. I would be lost without my trail cameras out in the bush. Um, getting those candid pictures and photos of the animals doing their natural thing when no one's around is a great reason and part of why I love getting outdoors so much. I love the outdoors and running trail cameras gives me the opportunity to see what's happening when I'm not around. If you want to talk more trail cameras, I encourage you to post your comments, questions in the comments section below. I'd also love it if you were to subscribe and like this video. Also click the bell notification button so you don't miss out on any more upcoming episodes. That's all for today. I hope you guys are doing great. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of DOA, Doorward Outdoor Adventures.